But she is not delivering the news from the anchor chair of ABC <clears throat> News Live Prime. Lindsay Davis is a New York Times best-selling children's book author whose latest book is called Girls of the World, <laughs> Doing More Than Ever Before. One of the best children's authors oh, I, we have ever you. read You've in our house. So supportive. We are you. rabid fans of your books, and that's not because you're my friend. I'm, <laughs> I'm more critical of my friends, <laughs> but um, we we know that you're always down to talk a little yep. hot topic. So today is Super Tuesday, and right now voters are casting votes in primaries and caucuses in 15 states plus one territory. So what are some things you're going to be looking for when all these results roll in tonight? I mean, I think after tonight, we're already looking ahead of the general election. I mean, we can just assume that Donald Trump is going to be the nominee, right? But what I am going to be looking at in particular, the exit polls. And so in particular, the mindset of the Republican electorate. Mm -hmm. And so what are they concerned about, especially when it comes to Trump? What are their thoughts on on abortion? Do they think that Joe Biden is a legitimate president? Mm -hmm. And if convicted, is Donald Trump going to still be fit to be president? Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm looking for down the road a little bit is the Supreme Court's decision mm -hmm. on, and I call it the other AI. You know, people are so worried about artificial intelligence, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I think that absolute immunity yeah. really could be dangerous yes. yeah. for anyone. Yes. They're not going to do that. I don't um, think they're going to give it. I'm not I sure. don't. It's hitting well, horrible. if they do, Joe Biden's going to have a hell of a time. Yeah. <laughs> it just would become open season on everybody in that case. But, we but. will, uh, probably May or June, I say that they'll probably have a decision at that yeah. point. Mm -hmm. uh, so today is make or break for, for Nikki Haley. Um, so what do you think is the, the bar, the lowest bar that she's looking towards? Because it seems like everybody's saying she's not going to be the nominee. Is she, sta I would say, stay in and see what happens to him. He might be in jail. Please. Um, <laughs> Or he might have a straw. We don't know what's going to happen. But she wouldn't then necessarily be the heir apparent, right? The delegates right. would have to decide that. I think that, you know, her campaign has always said all along they need to stay competitive. At the same time, they haven't defined what does competitive mean. Right. So, you know, if she really thinks that she can be uh, the nominee, she's going to have to blow all the expectations out of the water. It seems but, highly unlikely. But she's walking back her support a little bit. Right. But I don't trust that, because once he's the nominee, if... You think she's going to endorse him? They all do. I, this might be... Time will tell. Yeah. At this particular moment, it doesn't seem likely, but I think that if I'm Trump, I'm slightly worried yeah. about that, because, Alyssa, as you were mentioning at the top of the show, they do have that 30 or 40 percent voting block that she keeps getting. Yeah. Are those voters going to go back to Trump? Yeah, where are they going? Yeah. And she, tonight, would really need to outperform, in particular, in the college towns yes. and the suburbs, yes. where Trump has historically had yeah. a difficult time. Oh, yes. the suburban women are not going to vote for him. I no? Think. Well, the abortion situation, now the IVF thing. Of them during the primaries have. Well, we shall well. see. Well, Lindsay, I want to ask you, too, there was this New York Times Siena polling that came out with some pretty bad numbers for Joe Biden, having him about four points uh, behind President Trump, former President Trump in the general election. Um, I've been saying I think this election comes down to seven or eight battleground states. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the, the Biden campaign is taking seriously enough the fact that this will be competitive despite 91 indictments and all the things we know? You know, or felony it, counts, it seems say. the alarm bell should be ringing for them if for no other reason than those 100,000 undeclared voters in Michigan last week, right? But mm -hmm. if that is the case, they seem to be keeping it really close to the vest. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have admitted that this is going to be a close election, right? But uh, you have uh, Joe Biden, who was quoted just yesterday in an article saying, look, I'm the only guy who's ever beaten Donald Trump. I can do it again. His close allies are saying uh, America, if given the choice between crazy and normal, they're going to choose normal every time. And so they kind of have this, like, you know, laissez-faire attitude, like, we got this. Don't worry. Our but voters are going to come strategy? back out. Isn't that strategy? Because we talked once about an answer Nikki Haley gave in an interview, and she said, hey, we're scared. And everyone was like, why would she say that? You should just say you're going to go at it. So I tend to think you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because I'm guessing that strategy to say, we got this. I would say, because oh, you don't want to come out. Vice President Harris. Not. You don't want to seem like you're a nervous Nelly. Yes. Right? Yeah. But you do have Harris, who's now coming out really very much uh, saying, we need to have this ceasefire. We need to have it now. Right. That seems to be a change. She seems to be coming on that much stronger 
longer. She does caveat in the wake of that Michigan. with Hamas. Saying yes. They want Hamas yes. to help with that. Yes. That's an important sure. distinction, yes. I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you're it right. is language, stronger language, I think you're right. Yes. Than, than we've since heard Michigan. from the Biden yes. administration since the 100,000 yes. uh, 100, undeclared votes. But let me ask you this, my friend. Besides being an incredible reporter, whip smart, uh, an anchor, um, an in excellent debate moderator, oh. in my opinion, <laughs> yeah. um, you're also a writer. And today, your sixth children's book is out. Mm -hmm. Six, Girls of the World Doing More Than Ever Before. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Thank you. What I love about what I love about this book in particular is you're encouraging girls to speak up and show what they are worth. Yes. So tell us more about that message. I think that it's so important, at least to plant the seeds, to say not only who you are, but what you're capable of. And even just as we're talking about the election, just when I was looking back to 1789 was when George Washington was inaugurated, right? And that in the 235 years since, we have not had a female president. No, we have not. We're so far behind other countries that have already had female prime ministers and, and presidents, right? When yeah. you look at the CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, 10% of them are women. Mm -hmm. So why is that? Is it a mindset that we don't think mm -hmm. that we're capable? Are we choosing to not take those we're opportunities? We're not making the decisions. Yeah. That's the problem. We're not, we're not in the positions where you need to be in order to see who's coming up. And that is because, for some reason, we were first stopped with this idea of the glass ceiling. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we were told, well, you have to, you can't have children and a job. Mm -hmm. So there's all these, well, you can't do that and you can't do that. Right. And I think people just got to the place where it's like, just shut up and let me be. Right. And we yeah, aren't you know? in the room when the decisions are made. Someone told me, Carla Harris, who you know, every decision about your career is made when you're in the room. Yeah. And if you don't have a champion in that room with political power that's willing to spend it on you, you're not going anywhere. You're well, not yeah. getting it. But we've into made that tremendous room. strides, yeah. but there's yeah. a big pushback going yeah. on right now, yeah. and that's what yes. we need to worry about right. and watch. And that's why I'm hoping in this youngest generation, mm -hmm. clean slate, mm -hmm. right? For even though many people see this as a book just for girls, I think it's just as important. I have a son yeah. Yeah. who can be very gender, like, oh, that's for girls in a derogatory way. Yeah. And I think it's just important to change his mindset yes. about Absolutely. what girls are capable of. My kids, boys, my daughter and my two sons are huge fans of your book. And we used to read them every night. I used to take pictures and send them yes. to the bookstores. And, but now we have a new reader that I've been replaced by. So let's oh. check it out. <laughs> Watch this. Girls of the world doing more than ever before. The sun will shine and the moon will glow. The birds will fly and the wind will blow. There's other great truth all people should know. The girls of the world are ready to go. I love it. She's an expert. That was my favorite. She can read at five. She really has well. loved reading, and your books have been a great jumping off point. I love the rhyming. I love all the different messages in your books. There, but it, it's not for girls. I think it is important to remind people it's about boys because yes. I think we teach our boys just as much as our girls oh, yeah. how we all fit in the world, the equality and everything else. Let's break all those bad habits. Yeah. <laughs> Start afresh and anew. Yeah. Start with the book. That'll take you down the road. Lindsay Davis, you know you're always welcome at this table. Thank you. The new book, Girls of the World Doing More Than Ever Before, is available today.